Hey, Seattle hockey fans, I hope you are riding high after that win against the Buffalo Sabres. We'll talk about that a little bit. Then I'll get you back to my conversation with Hadi from our new show. Hasn't aired just yet. Locked on NHL Prospects. We're going to talk about Maddie Beneers and his development and also some other rookies in the league this year, including your eyes, Lovkovsky. But also, I think it's time that I issue an apology to the geeky squad. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, Seattle hockey fans, welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken. I am your host, Erica L. Ayala. I hope you enjoyed me reprising my rallying cry from yesterday. It seems like we had a few fans. I have a fan that was wearing Kraken shorts and a Beneers jersey. I have a fan that was wearing a Kraken jersey, the blue home jersey, of course, with a Nirvana shirt underneath. Of course, Piper Shaw was wearing her Bowie t-shirt underneath her work wardrobe and i myself had my sue bird goat tee from play a society and of course was wearing my locked on hat whatever we did collectively fam it worked we gave buffalo their first road loss of the season we remain undefeated against the buffalo sabers lifetime so that's amazing and this was a great performance there were still little things, little hiccups here and there, and you'll hear from some players. But overall, we had five different players light the lamp red. That's right. See, I've got my – it's a little bright today, so you can't see it as much, but that's our red lamp for the goals. We had Alexiak score a goal. Uh, Morgan Geeky with a beautiful pass by Brandon Tanev. Tanev also assisted on Daniel Sprong's goal. So that fourth line really humming. And that goes back to something that I said in my open. Is it time for me to issue an apology to the Geeky Squad? Is it true that you can't out Pizza the Hut? Morgan Geeky has really been doing a great job when it comes to utilizing and capitalizing on his minutes. And in fact, he and Daniel Sprung talked a little bit about that after yesterday's win against the Buffalo Sabres. Let's take you to the locker room. We'll hear from Morgan Geeky first on yelling at yet uh, Brandon Tanev, and then you'll hear from Daniel Sprung. A new goal. Were you anticipating that pass from Brandon? I mean, obviously, he had a couple of great assists tonight. Um, yes, I, I called for it. I, he 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 yells at me all the time, so I figured <laughs> I could yell at him back, and he heard me tonight. So, um, no, it's it's good. Uh, you know, he made a heck of a play, kind of over the defenseman, and and uh, you know, I just try to use my speed and my size and, and gain some ground on it. As a pro athlete, did you at all feel like? I'm going to teach them. They're not going to make me a healthy scratch again. I just think I wanted a good bounce back game. Like I said in between periods, you know, I, I got to miss the first two games because of the reason. And I uh, just wanted to get my rhythm back from training camp and uh, had a good week of practice. It felt good and then uh, wanted to play well tonight. How was the chemistry with your line tonight with, uh, with Geeky and Tanev? Yeah, we played uh, an Edmonton at Boss preseason game together and we had some really good looks. So uh, we could all skate. We're big boys. And uh, I thought our line really uh, complement each other tonight. So you might have picked up in those short clips that, yes, people are asking questions of Dave Haxtell. What exactly is he doing with his healthy scratches? How is he creating competition? With Sprung and Geeky in the lineup, that meant that as far as our forwards, we had Shane Wright and my boy Ryan Donato out of the lineup. Now, I have loved what Donato has been doing with Tanev. I think Geeky, Sprung, and Tanev, if I'm being quite honest, might be the winning recipe. So if Donato is going to be paired with Wright, and Wright's not getting minutes, does that mean Donato is not getting minutes? I personally don't like it. I know a lot of people are focused on, on, on Shane Wright and what he is and isn't doing. We have Hadi on the show. We had him on yesterday. You're going to hear from him today. I think we need to cool the Jets a little bit with that. But let's hear what Dave Haxtell had to say about Shane Wright and the development plan. 
Coach, after the St. Louis game, you said that you wanted to get more minutes for Shane Wright, but he played under six in Chicago and was a healthy scratch tonight. So you can, can you tell me what your reasoning was? Yeah, you know, he, uh, he played a good game in, uh, in Colorado. Uh, we, got him, uh, you know, we got him a few more minutes there. He did a good job. Um, you know, the game in Chicago didn't go the way we wanted to. So, um, but that's not that's not indicative of, of one individual player. You know, and certainly not just Shane. So, you know, we had a real good work day with Shane today. We've got uh, you know we, we've got a uh, good plan uh, moving forward. You know, it, it's all about making small progress. Um, there's no there's no big huge leaps and bounds that we're looking for. We're looking for great work. Um, you know, and, and slow progress and continued progress, and that's the biggest thing for us. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. So we didn't really get any details. Dave Haxtell alluded that there is a plan. Other accounts like Emerald City Hockey, uh, Sound of Hockey, had reported that Shane Wright stayed on the ice for a few extra minutes getting some one-on-one -on -one time. It seems like that was what Dave Haxtell was alluding to. So there is some time put in, but I, for the rest of the show, want to take you to my ongoing conversation with Hadi, who's going to be our new host of, or the host of our new show, Locked on NHL Prospects. The show hasn't officially started yet, but you can still follow Locked on Prospects on social media and i hope you do follow hadi he was in the comments on youtube yesterday for our the part one of our conversation he talked about the death glare from shane wright he was there at the draft so hadi is going to have amazing expertise i can't wait to talk to him a little bit more but he had some great things to say about maddie veneers who also lit the lamp red he got a goal maddie i just i adore this kid I know I've said I'm going to get a Seattle Kraken jersey when they get their first BIPOC player on the squad. Ryan Donato and Maddie Benares make it really hard to keep that promise. So they just have to keep, they just have to stay on the team. And then I'll just, you know, go into bankruptcy and buy all of the jerseys at the same time. I don't recommend that. That was absolutely a joke. Either way, let's hear from Hadi a little bit more about Maddie Veneers and some other prospects around the NHL for the rest of this episode of Locked on Kraken. Before I send you over to Hadi, though, let's talk about Bet Online. Uh, we're going to hear about Maddie Veneers. And basically, I think we make a pretty strong case for him being a Calder Trophy winner. But if you head over to Bet Online, you can find things such as futures odds and future bets for things like. Calder Trophy, Vesna Trophy, Hart Trophy, etc. You can find all of that stuff on betonline.net because they are your number one source for betting in NHL football and basketball. You can find the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and of course, in-depth, in-depth analysis on every game. As always, Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports wagering information. Head to the website today. You can use your tablet, your mobile device, your desktop, your laptop, whatever you got, and make sure that you head to betonline.net because betonline is where the game starts. Now I take you to the rest of my conversation, starting off with Maddie Beneers. Again, check out those future bets on Bet Online regarding Maddie Beneers um, and his development with the Seattle Kraken. We are so thrilled to bring on Hattie and to be a part of the Locked on NHL network as our host of Locked on NHL Prospects. Been giving us a lot of insight on Shane Wright. Of course, that's a big conversation in a Kraken Nation. But, um, you know, I want to step aside from Shane Wright just for a little bit and then we'll talk about his draft class. But as I've been thinking about what is or isn't the uh, development for um, Shane Wright, it makes me wonder, should we, should we be concerned about the development plan for Maddie Beneers? Came into the league, played uh, about 10 games last season, started off pretty hot for Seattle. I mean, you know, he's in a 
he's in a dry spell, two games, whoa, without a point. Oh my goodness. How, yeah. how can I even bear it? But, uh, <laughs> you know, jokes aside, thinking just about what we're seeing and some of the challenges that Shane Wright or that the system Seattle has and how that could pose um, challenges for Shane Wright's development. I wonder if you think it's a similar situation for Maddie Beneers or are there things about his development that you think are inherently different and that make his development within the Seattle Kraken system a little bit different? So I'm a big believer in individualized uh, development plans. I think that you need to cater your development team to flexibility because every single prospect is inherently different uh, by nature. Matty Beniers and Shane Wright will not have the same trajectories, will not have the same development objectives, will not have the same uh, milestones in their careers. Uh, to me, Matty Beniers is an NHL-ready player. He has shown the, the pace of play, the tenacity, um, the intensity required to make a direct impact on the game, even when he's not putting up points. Um, it's, it goes beyond his defensive positioning or his involvement. Um, he carries his teammates through transitions. He takes care of the puck extremely well. He's not a player that's going to um, forget to scan or make a mistake or leave a player open or that kind of thing. Not often, at least. It's going to happen, but it's not sort of a regularity with him. Um to me, Matty Beniers, his year in the NCAA with Michigan was very telling of the player that I think he is. And I, I watched them a lot because I also scouted the Devils for uh, Dauber Prospects and Luke Hughes, defenseman on Michigan. So I watched that team a whole lot. Um, either way, they have a ton of prospects. Really yeah. Loaded. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I saw a player who regularly was the best player on the ice for his team um, in all three zones. So to me – it's, it's sort of a different scenario because Shane Wright, um, he tends to glide at times. Um, he's very well positioned. He's very analytical, but he needs to bring everything up a level. Veneers was already at that level. It was just about fine-tuning his shot, uh, making him a bit more of a, of a smart distributor. But he didn't really need work in terms of upping his pace of play like Shane Wright does. So to me, Veneers is very fine with the Kraken right now. Um, and they can sort of start developing their identity around that. I think the Kraken have a very solid opportunity to be a fast-paced, possession-based, um, you know, analytical darling of a hockey team. And Beniers really seems like that to me. He sort of fits that mold perfectly. Wow, I love that, especially because I think your your analysis has been spot on. And Maddie knew that coming into this, what is expected to be his first full NHL season, that the big thing for him was not only putting on weight in the summer, but putting on like good, hev heavy, hefty weight that he wouldn't burn off as he started to, you know, run the paces of an NHL season. And if you look at the games, uh, one, Maddie Veneers, and we'll get to your eye in a minute, but, you know, as a rookie, you're going to, you, you know, someone's going to try and give you your NHL moment. And if they're yeah. not on your team, it's probably not going to be a good one. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Um, and, you know, so so we've seen Veneers. He's taken some hits, uh, you know, and I love, you know, he took a, a pretty big hit. Uh, maybe it was like the second game, I think, of, of the season, uh, you know, right on the blue line as he's entering the ozone, like just a, a crack. And he pops right back up. Um, I've seen also that he's been bodied off of the puck. So along the boards, not being able to be either in the, the better position or to hunker down his body weight and be strong on his stick to maintain possession or at least not make it so easy for someone else to pick up his stick and uh, take away the puck. I've seen that even in a short amount of games, he's improved in those areas. I think you're absolutely right about his positioning. Now the Seattle Kraken, they have an issue uh, generally as a team and just kind of being absent-minded on the ice. If Beneers is in a situation where there's a costly turn turnover or something in front of net, I think more often than not, it's maybe that he was outbodied and is recovering from that as opposed to him being out of position. Seattle hockey fans, I always appreciate you making Locked on Cracking your first listen of the day, but I also want to let you know about some of the other amazing shows. Obviously, you're hearing from Hadi, who will be our host of Locked on NHL 
prospects, but we also have Locked On Sports Today. Now, I've been on this show before, even got to host it before, but Locked On Sports Today, formerly known as Locked On Today, is where you go for everything that you need in sports. Biggest sports news in the day, from games that matter the most to the big stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights on Locked On Sports Today that only... Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today is available wherever you find podcasts, whether it's the Odyssey app, on YouTube, or of course, your favorite audio listening platform. So check out Locked On Sports Today. I'm going to get you back to my conversation with Hadi. Hadi Cheech, he is going to be our host of the Locked On NHL Prospects show. But before we head over to Hadi, let me tell you a little bit about the numbers because the numbers don't lie. And for decades, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. So we want you to have an opportunity to customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com backslash locked on NHL. When you head to simplysafe.com backslash locked on NHL, you will save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and you will get your first month free. So visit simplysafe.com backslash locked on NHL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. And I think it's safe to say that Hadi is going to be a great addition to our team. I I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Hadi. We had it over the weekend and I enjoyed it so much that I split it into two episodes. And also we enjoyed talking about Maddie Veneers and Shane Wright and Uri Slavkovsky. That's coming up. And ooh, Uri, you talk about Shane Wright's death glare. Well, Uri had a very excitable moment after his first NHL goal, and you're going to hear Hadi talk all about it. He can still be forced out of position because he does have to get his weight up or at least be more comfortable with his body positioning and absorbing that weight. But it's, it's very rarely to your point that in my estimation that He's completely out of position. And that's not to say I've seen that with Shane Wright either. I do see what you're saying, that he glides a little bit more. He looks – and again, I say this uh, as a critique of of the team that I follow, but he does look like almost every other Seattle Kraken player on the ice at times. Mm -hmm. And that's not always what I want to see. I want to see this young guy going in and like we see with Matty Beneers. Is he yelling at guys? Is he screaming? And Well, not from what we can see on the ice, but he – elevates everyone's game regardless of how many years they have on him because of how he works he is on a line with Andre Burakovsky on a power play with Andre Burakovsky and after practices after morning skate has a two-time Stanley Cup champion working with him on one-timers yeah. That's the kind of work that Beneers is putting in. And he is the one who's initiating that. He said, yeah, yeah I wanted to take those because I missed some in our mm-hmm. first handful of games. And I'm not, I'm not going to miss those again. I don't know yet if, if Wright has that. Is he comfortable with that? Does, does he have the self-awareness to know this is the one piece of my game? Like there's m- multiple things, but this is the one thing I'm going to focus on and I'm not going to be, get beat on again. I don't mm-hmm. know. I haven't seen it yet. That doesn't mean it's not there, but it's certainly not at the level of a Matty Beneers. Yeah, no, exactly. And right to me, just strikes me as a player who likes to sit back and think of the game and sort of yep. make the right decision. He's a very calculated and analytical player. Those have their value. I think yep. that he can turn into a sort of Patrice Bergeron with enough time, but there's a lot of work that needs to be put in in terms of doing what Matty Beneers does, which is drag everyone's pace of play up a level to the level that he's comfortable with. Because Shane Wright will sort of slow down the pace of play, right? But mm-hmm. I think if Wright can sort of learn to drag everyone's pace of play to his level rather than do the opposite and sort of slow everything down, mm-hmm. um, it would add an extra level to his game and a, a sort of change of pace, if you will. Like, he can do both, and that would be excellent. Yeah, I love it. And before people, because I know our Twitter handles are down here, like, don't come with the hate. We are 
I, we are definitely nitpicking here. We are, we are absolutely nitpicking, but that's what you do at this level. These are promising young prospects, but I love that word that you used, calculated, because there are times where I don't think Seattle has been calculated enough. There are times where we hold the puck too much. There's times where we don't think it through enough, where we're trying to you know make blind passes, and then they get intercepted breakaway on Grubauer. So I like that. I like that his game is naturally a little bit more calculated and there will be a time where the Seattle Kraken need a player like a Shane Wright to settle things down. Um, that being said, I kind of want to see Seattle just bust their lungs open <laughs> for a little bit and see where they're at at their high octane capacity before they start being calculated. And that's another difference. And I loved what you said earlier about an individualized development plan. I think the other side of that, of course, is also individually seeing the, the player that is and how you want that to fit into a air quotes for those listening on audio system <laughs> because who knows what the Kraken system is. Anyway, we'll have to talk to someone else, another uh, <laughs> specialist about that, but um, you know, figuring out what that individual player brings um, and, and how you think that's going to develop the overall system and the overall team, as opposed yeah. to what we've been talking about, about how the team is going to help with the individualized development plan. So I love this. We're going to have to have you on again. I could have these conversations for days. I absolutely yeah. love this. But I didn't want to close without talking about Yuri Slavkovsky. He got his first NHL goal. Speaking of kind of being a rookie and getting the business every once in a while, you know, he got stood up as he entered the offensive zone, similar to what I said, Maddie Beneers experienced, took a hit, tumbled to the ice. His hit wasn't, I mean, relatively speaking, in my estimation, he didn't get dropped as hard as Maddie. He, no, he didn't. <laughs> your eyes are pretty, he's, a, he's got good size. Yeah. But um, what did he do after that hit, Patty? <laughs> um, words that I don't think we can repeat on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> he gave it to Josh Brown. Uh, was it Josh Brown? I think it's Josh Brown. Brown, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He basically he got stood up at the at the at the blue line heading into the offensive zone. Uh, what I really liked afterwards, though, was after he got up, he identified that Arbor Jacki was making a straight line for that player and was going to bury him. So he stayed at the blue line and decided to hold it so that Jacki could be covered in case there was a turnover. What ended up happening is the, po the puck popped up to him at the blue line. He picked it up made a it made a beeline for the uh for uh the the slot the high slot and just fired a shot straight through the netminder um these are the little things that i wanted to see improve as Slavkovsky, and he just did a couple of them right there because one of the biggest things that i think was an issue with Slavkovsky and still is is he crowds the short side so he'll sort of gravitate towards the side of the puck at all times. And what that does is it forces his teammates to readjust, to take different routes, to yeah. adapt to his positioning rather than him playing through the system and, and playing his role in his position. Um, but what he did there was really, really smart because it allowed Jack Eye to go and take a run at that guy and not be worried. And he was smart enough to identify that route that his teammate was taking and adapt to it rather than just go to the puck. Because if two guys went into the corner to, with, for the puck, that goal doesn't happen. Right. right, but I absolutely loved seeing him give it to Josh Brown after that goal. Him and Jack, I were just standing there giving it to him. Uh, <laughs> he was excited. He was fired up, and that's what I like to so see from the prospect. Up. That confidence in so Montreal fired. is essential. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. He was fired up, and then you could see, talk about, like, death stare. He yeah. gave Brown a death stare. Like, he gave <laughs> yeah. him an extra, ah, like, you tried to see me and look who, look who. Uh, oh, woman. yeah, and, you absolutely. Know, Montreal definitely got the last laugh on mm -hmm. that one. So just wanted to to point out Yuri Slavkovsky, someone we talked a lot about. I um, – I really liked him. I, I I think he had a chance to go one. All it really all depends on um, on what a team wants or what they don't want for that matter. But your I just uh, he started really growing on me. I like his size. I like that he's like yeah. I basically told him I should be number one. So. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love a little bit of that. Give me all the spice. So to see his uh, first NHL goal, Sally, I, I couldn't uh, uh, have you leave the show without talking about that. But um, I'm I'm really excited. I think still to be determined on how this overall draft class is going to perform. I I wouldn't be surprised 
if we see Shane Wright go back to the OHL, there's also a piece of me that thinks that he won't, um, you know, and I think if he doesn't, to me, that's a little bit more of an indication of placating storylines in my personal opinion. Um, but I don't know. I also don't do this for a living. I'm a podcaster. So <laughs> maybe there is something that, that I'm missing there, but I would be totally fine to let him develop play that free style hockey, no pressure. As you said earlier, I am very intrigued on what that could do for him. I mean, it's akin to Maddie Benier is not going to world championships, taking some time off. He played with in uh, juniors. He played with the world championship before COVID shut everything down went to the Olympics, played in the frozen four played in the NHL, you know, and then had time, just time to develop his game over the summer. So what would that look like for Shane Wright? Could he have a similar, well, it's not an exact uh, identical path, but similarly have some time, pressure off, already knows he's with a team, doesn't have to worry about a draft, can just go play hockey. I, I like that. I like that a lot. But only time will tell, but uh, Hadi, we'll have to have you back on Locked on Kraken, and we cannot wait for your show to officially launch. We'll make sure to keep up with everyone, but before I let you go, let us know what you're working on, what's coming down the pike, and, and how can we follow your work? So uh, you can find me on Twitter pretty easily. My handle's right there if you're watching on YouTube. If uh, you're watching audio only, it's Hattie K underscore scouting. Um, so I'm easy to find there. I put all, I post all of my work there from Habs Eyes on the Price to Dr. Prospects to um, the upcoming Locked On NHL Prospects podcast. I'll be posting those when they come out on Twitter as well. Um, you can follow preemptively the Locked On NHL Prospects podcast on uh, different platforms. Just waiting for it to come out. Uh, still working through a couple kinks, making sure I understand all the logistics and the systems well. But as soon as I've got that up and running, um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get the notification. Uh, I also post videos on YouTube occasionally, uh, breaking down some prospects games. I did one recently on Yuri Slavkovsky's first NHL game. That went pretty well. Um, so yeah, YouTube and Twitter mainly is where you can find me. Um, my full name, uh, you know, just put that in on YouTube. You'll find me pretty quickly. Uh, so those are my platforms. I love it. And we will make sure if you're listening on audio or, of course, if you're joining us on YouTube, you can check the show notes. They will be there for you. And we will make sure to get you some listeners uh, for the debut. We can't wait for it. But thank you so much for talking all things Shane Wright and Maddie Beniers with a little your eye thrown in there as well. Yep. <laughs> And uh, we'll chat soon. All right, hockey fans, I hope you enjoyed this squad cast or crossover. And this time with someone who's not even on the network yet. That's how we do it here on Locked on Kraken. But until tomorrow's episode, you know what, what we do here. We hold fast, we stay true, and we say, let's go Kraken. Tomorrow's episode will be a game day preview. If you see me wear the same thing that I wore on Monday, I feel like I've already explained this. We now have a routine here. I expect all of you to follow suit. I'm talking Piper. I'm talking Jeff on the Kraken pod. I'm talking everyone in the mentions. I haven't seen all of the comments yet, but if you head over to Locked on Kraken on social media, on Twitter in particular, let me know the question of the day. What did you do? on Monday, or excuse me, on Tuesday to secure the Seattle Kraken win. Well, I mean, the guys secured it. Let's keep it real. The players secured the win, but we helped them on. We held fast. We stayed true, and we wore our favorite Kraken gear, our favorite Seattle sports gear, our favorite Seattle music gear, whatever it is. Let me know what you did, and are you going to do it Thursday? I'm committing. I hope you will, too. And if it doesn't work, then we wash all of that bad juju, we sage it out, and we start over again. Either way, I hope you'll join me as we figure out what really gets this Kraken team going, both from the fan base perspective and what we can do to send the good vibes, but also where the consistency is going to lie. We didn't talk about that too much, but I will go into more detail about what worked in Buffalo and what we need to see against Vancouver, and we will have a special guest. Yes, we are squad casting it up. You're not going to want to miss it. Until tomorrow, take care of yourselves and each other. Rock out to a little Nirvana or some Piper, original Piper Shaw music, whatever your vibe. Either way, I hope you're ready for another game, another Seattle Kraken game, and some fun hockey talk right here 
on Locked on Kraken. See ya.